so the Roman Catholic Church teaches that uh, if you believe that you are eternally secure, uh, they will accuse you of committing what they call the sin of presumption. Okay, I'm going to show you that in their catechism, and then I'm going to debunk it with the Bible. Okay, the sin of presumption, you know, as the Catholic Church describes it, is found nowhere in the Bible, and it's actually both anti-Bible because it's the opposite of what the Bible says, and it's anti-Christ because it attacks the the saving power of Jesus Christ and what He did for you on the cross, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Um, so let's go to, to what it says in the uh, the Catechism. This is page five hundred and seven. Um, you know, it talks about it's talking about subjects about hope and and the, the you know despair and presumption. It talks about despair up here, but then it starts talking about presumption, right? Now it's a you know. It claims the Roman Catholic Church claims this is a sin. Look what it says. There are two kinds of presumption. Either man presumes upon his own capacities, hoping he might be able to save himself without help from on high, or he presumes that God's almighty power or his mercy, hoping to obtain his forgiveness without conversion and glory without merit. Okay. So, according to the Roman Catholic Church, if you think it's possible to, you know, be saved without merit, you're committing the sin of presumption. And I've actually run in to Roman Catholics out knocking doors. You know, well, I, well, I, you know, I would ask them, are you 100% sure that God forbid if you died today you would go to heaven? And they would say, no, that's the sin of presumption, right? And so this is a big deal because it keeps... Uh, Roman Catholics, um, some of them, for, from even entertaining what the Bible actually says about eternal security. Okay, now what does the Bible actually say? Now, a verse I like showing everybody I can is uh, 1 John 5.13. It says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you, you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And, you know, I like showing this verse first to people when when I, I'm, you know, near them, when I'm at, you know, knocking doors and things like that. Because if, if our time gets sh cut short, if our conversation gets cut short, you know, I, I would have at least showed them that the Bible flat out says you can know that you have eternal life, right? Because a lot of people claim you can't know, and they say, hey, nobody can know. Well, the Bible says you can know, okay? So if my conversations ever get cut short with somebody, um, you know, if they have to leave or shut the door or they just don't want to hear it anymore, I at least like showing them that the Bible point blank says you can know that you have eternal life. So then they can't pretend like nobody can know because that's what the Bible says. They would have to deny what the Bible clearly says um, if they want to continue to claim that you can't know. But the Bible says you can know. So let's back up. Starting at verse 10, it says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself... He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So, if you don't believe that record that, that God gave of His Son, 
that, that eternal life is through Jesus Christ. You're calling God a liar. Okay? The Bible says, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Do not call God a liar. God is not a liar. It's impossible for God to lie. And what this, uh, you know, Catholic sin of presumption does is call God a liar. It's anti-Christ and anti-Bible. And it's blasphemous. Um, along with many other things the Catholic Church teaches, they, they make the word, they, you know, they attempt to make the, the word of God null and void through their vain traditions. And uh, look, the reason most people you run into think they can't know that they have eternal life, it's because they're trusting in themselves in some way. They're trusting in the works that they do, the deeds, what church they go to, whether they're not they're, they're charitable, things like that, whether or not they've been baptized. And, you know, uh, the Roman Catholic system, uh, they, they teach you that you have to have you know, a bunch of good deeds, and maybe you'll get to heaven, okay? They can't even tell you for sure. And look, the reason they can't tell you for sure is because if you just think about it logically, if you if going to heaven is based on how good you are, you're always going to be wondering, was I good enough today? What if I do something bad tomorrow? Was I good enough yesterday? Right? And so, like that, you can never know. So, the Bible says we can know. And how can we know? Well, because the gospel is not about your works. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's how Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and rose again on the third day. And that's good news, because Jesus Christ already did all of that. And because Jesus Christ died for our sins on the cross, and uh, you know he died on the cross close to 2,000 years ago, he died for all your sins, not just some of them. He died for all of them. Okay, he already did it. It's already been paid for. Um, the Bible says in Galatians 2.16, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And later on in the same chapter, it says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, so God's grace is unmerited. We do not deserve God's grace. Um... But basically what the the Roman Catholic sin of presumption, false teaching claims, is that if you believe in the grace of God, that, that you can have God's grace without merit, the Roman Catholic Church claims that that's a sin. They say it's a sin for you to think that you're eternally secure. Um... And you're going to have to make a choice if you're a Roman Catholic. Are, are you going to continue to believe the lies of the Roman Catholic Church? Or are you going to believe the Bible? Jesus Christ said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's John 3.16. And look, how long is everlasting? It's forever. It's eternal life. It's not temporary life. And by putting your faith in what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, you can know that you have eternal life. Again, because Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh. He lived a perfect sinless life. A life you and I could never live. And He died for your sins. Okay? And He already did that. He already rose from the, the dead. Okay? And He already paid for your sins. So, of course, it's once saved, always saved. Of course, you can know that you have eternal life and that this life 
is in the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. See, the Catholic Church can offer you nothing, okay? Because they're they're not the Savior. Um, all, all they can do is confuse you and lead you away from the simplicity that is in Christ. Um, the Roman Catholic Church, you know, they'll they'll change their doctrines throughout time. I mean, you get a new pope in, and he'll change stuff. For for example, I remember when when Pope said that, you know, sodomy was wrong, and and now Pope Francis he sees for uh, the homosexuals getting married, and he flirts with communism, things like that, and you know, communism is openly anti God. Um, but anyways. If you're a Roman Catholic listening to this, I beseech you, realize that we all deserve hell for our sins, and we don't deserve God's grace, but God loves us, He doesn't want us to go to hell, and He's freely offering grace. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, and a gift is something you don't work for. Something that you, as the receiver of the gift, do not pay for. Okay. And this is good news. The gospel is good news. And um, you know, here in Galatians three eleven, it says, "But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith." Okay. And um. Salvation is not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of, of eternal life. And, see, that's very different than what the Roman Catholic Church teaches. And here's something Jesus Christ said, in John 6, 47, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. You can know that you have eternal life, that this life is in God's only begotten Son. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house.